You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get your last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. This is july the 20th 2020 with you today is myself carl and stevie nick we're back this is the second week in a row we're recording it's it feels a little weird right yeah but there's stuff to talk about it feels yeah absolutely we've got a ton to talk about because this week nick we're previewing the eastern conference we are previewing the eastern conference we're like two weeks away from starting yeah, what what's nice, I was thinking about this today. I'm like, normally you have like we have one week typically to preview matchups. Yeah. We've known these matchups for a while now. And so we will spend this week previewing the East. Next week we'll preview the West. Touch on any sort of news. There's a little bit of news that's like not matchup related, but very very get back to worky for the NHL and us this week. Um but you, you had a big week. I had a big week. I had a big week. And, you know, talking about the Eastern Conference, I might need to be careful uh, what I say here about who my favorites are because what we talked about last week, Carl, I, I did it. I submitted my application. To, to, to the Sabres? I submitted my application to the Buffalo Sabres to be the new vice president of business affairs. I mean, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Did you? Wow, thank did they you. Get, <laughs> or were you talking about them? Either way, thank you. Right. I mean, did they, did they like get back to you at all or? Uh, yeah, they did. They thanked me for my application um, uh, turns out they were recruiting for the role and they asked me for some references. Oh, I don't, I don't want to disappoint you, but like thanking someone for their resume is like the bare minimum that you do for someone. <laughs> like that's a, you got back a form email, Nick. Well, Carl, that is uh, one of the first things I'm going to change as the VP of business affairs. You're going to personally reply to everyone's email. What else does this job do? <laughs> I mean, business affairs. There's a lot. <laughs> I'm sure what? there is. As long as I show up with a briefcase and a tie, I'm sure I'll be fine. And just look busy. Yeah. Like, how's your day looking today? I got lots of business to do. So many business to develop. Uh, some of the stuff that's already developed, I need to push to the next stage. Exactly. I got to make sure that when people walk by my open office door, my sleeves are rolled up to the elbows. Ooh, you have an open door policy. Uh, of course. What kind of VP of business affairs would I be if I did it? It's all about culture, Carl. Well, very excited to see where this could lead, Nick. Um, one thing that's nice, I, I can only assume that it's a mixture of the lighting in your room and you spending some time outside and also the hat you're wearing. But to cycle back to the topic that's kept us going through quarantine, your hair uh, looks like you bleached the tips of it today. And it, <laughs> oh looks, my God. it looks like you're ready for hockey to be back is what it looks like. <laughs> well, I mean, the hair, is, the hair is back. I shaved the beard, but the hair is back. Look at this. Wow. That is, yeah, the hair is back. Right? The hair is back. I actually put a patio door in beside me where there was just a wall before. So there's a lot more light coming in. Oh. Okay. And then the hat supports my application because it's a Harvard Business School hat. Mm. So I'm going to wear it to my interview. <laughs> you know, wear a hat to your interview. I like that. Why not? You got to know. I was wildly unprepared for what your hair is looking like these days. <laughs> Are you going to be able to focus for the rest of the show now? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> All right, Nick. Before we get to this, let's uh, remind folks about the Alberta Podcast Network and the fantastic supporters that we have. Now, Nick, I don't know if you have, but this is something that you maybe want to start listening to. Uh, 
Uh, I'm sure they have some tips for you. This is a podcast called Straight from the CPA's Mouth, a new podcast series created by the CPA Education Foundation and funded by the Heshi CPA Knowledge Center. So this is for Alberta's Chartered Professional Accountants. Now, you aren't going to be doing accounting, but to me, that sounds like business affairs include accounting. Yeah, I should probably learn a little bit about it. So I'll have to check this podcast out. So check out this podcast. Uh, They touch on a lot of things from leadership skills. You'll need those. Uh, Achieving career potential. Sky's the limit on this job. Who knows the potential? Uh, Financial literacy. You're going to need that. Big time. (laughs) And how to make your tax refund bigger. And I'm sure the Sabres could use as big a tax refund as possible. Oh, I'm sure they'd love that. You know what? I you gotta send me that description so I could just read it off during the interview. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Why don't you just just play me saying it and see if they notice a the difference? Just <laughs> play this episode for them. Great. Uh, so whether you're a university student, a new Albertan, a parent, or an applicant to the Buffalo Sabers, you'll find something of value on this unique show. You'll find this podcast called Straight from the CPA's Mouth on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts or the CPA Education Foundation's website at cpaalberta.ca slash foundation. That's cpaalberta.ca slash foundation. Here we go, Nick. Hockey! We are going to preview the East, as we mentioned, but first, the topic that I think was on everyone's mind, how is this going to work, right? We, we've got these players coming back in. We've got all of this happening. And they want to know, is this going to work? And we got, some, we got some COVID numbers back from the NHL this week. Yes, we did. How do they look? Do you have them in front of you? I do. Uh, so they did. So the first, the first time they announced testing results, they had 30 positive tests, Nick. Not super great. No. Today, they announced that there was two positive tests so far in phase three testing over 800 people over 2000 tests only two tested positive obviously uh they're not steve simmons so they did not say who these players were who tested positive um but two players have tested positive which i i think that's great it's surprisingly good I was very surprised when I saw these numbers, especially considering how many tests they've administered. It's very good for them. And it looks great too. So I, I, just, I really am curious about how they're kind of contact tracing for these two positive cases. Well, that's so they've tested over 800 players, did 2,618 tests. So that's like on average three tests per player. And this has only been going for two weeks so far. So, I mean, when you're testing players on average at least weekly, contact tracing isn't even much of a necessity. I guess that's true. If if they're getting tested that often, you don't really need to worry about it. No. So, uh, and that's what we've seen in, you know, similarly in baseball, they had a number of players show up and test positive and then not test positive after, right? Those numbers really dropped when you, when you hit that bubble idea and you test as much as you can. Um, turns out testing, important. Yeah. yeah, speaking of baseball, it seems like the uh, NHL really figured out how to work with the Canadian government, eh? Those Blue Jays still looking for a new home. Blue Jays are, I mean, they might go to Pittsburgh, they might go to Baltimore, who knows where they're going to end up. But I think the difference is that, and this is what I like about the NHL system, why, uh, and we'll get to this question in a second. I'll, I'll, I'll put that on hold. But I like, I like this because with what they have, baseball was going to be coming back and forth across the border many times. Yeah. It's very different with hockey. Well, yeah. I mean, you have everyone in the country and they're not leaving. Even That's- leaving like the city block. That's right. That's the way, that's the way it's going to work between the two. Yeah. Can you, we, we saw today and I saw you on, uh, on the socials the last couple of days talking about 
is there a secret underground tunnel <laughs> from the stadium to one of these hotels? The path. So the path in Toronto is a network of underground tunnels that kind of connects a lot of the big uh, buildings in the downtown core. And when I say like underground tunnels, don't think like raw subway station tunnels. Like these are beautiful, like commerce filled, food court filled um, tunnels that connect all these parts of the city. So what, what they said today was from the hotel that the players are staying in, which is, I guess we'll say it again, the Royal York Hotel, um, to the Scotiabank Arena, you can access uh, those two places through the underground path network. So it sounds like the NHL has designated a, uh, a path, for lack of a better term, um, where the players will be traveling back and forth. So they don't actually have to go outside or take a different route. Um, so that'll be part of the bubble is this direct kind of hallway between the Royal York Hotel and Scotiabank Arena. And so that's like, with that being the case, with like businesses being there, uh, I assume that they've just like paid those businesses to not be open when the NHL decides to use it as a walkway. I guess so. I would think most of those businesses are closed anyways, because they're all connected to office towers. Hmm. So a lot of them, even if they were allowed to be open, probably wouldn't even bother because all the offices are still closed. Right. Is this the same? Cause I've, I mean, I've only been to Toronto once ever. I spent like, two and a half hours, three hours downtown, and two of those were spent at the Hockey Hall of Fame. Is that like, because to get into the Hockey Hall of Fame, you go in through this weird underground... That's it. That That's it? So okay. did you enter the Hockey Hall of Fame at street level? No, I entered it underground. Yeah, so that is the path. And that, that path, like, spider webs out throughout the downtown core. And it is extremely confusing to get around because there's just these signs on the ceiling that kind of point you to the name of the building, which if you're not familiar with where you are, the name of the buildings don't really help because you kind of navigate the city by saying street names. Uh, And then it tells you like North, South, East, West, which again, underground means nothing. Well, that's, so Calgary has a similar system, um, but theirs is above ground. So it's like the second floor of every office building is designated that, right? and I get lost in those and there's windows. Yeah. Like I can only imagine. It's confusing. They're going to need very clear signage. I mean, I look forward to seeing who the first player to be late to a game because they're somewhere in the tunnels is. Just imagine them like wandering aimless and there's nobody down there. So it's not like they can ask anybody for help. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I'm sure maybe there's a, a staff member whose only job it is give them one of those ropes that you give kindergartners when they're walking around <laughs> and you just have the entire team hold that rope so no one gets lost. Or he, he's, he's at the front of the group of players with like a bell and they just have to keep following the bell. Or like a sign with their like team logo on it. <laughs> you can still see that you're not lost. Yes, that's right. Well, uh, good news on that. Um, Absolutely going to be good to be back. There was a, another thought that I said I was going to put on hold. Um, forget what that was, though. So Yeah, we were talking about the baseball at the time. Yeah, baseball and something about, uh, I'm sure it'll come back to me, or if it doesn't, it's not important. Yeah, but let's move on because this is good radio. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, Nick, let's head to the east. So, we're previewing the play-in round, which, as we discussed last week, is not the playoffs, but statistically is. So dumb. And so we've got four five best-of-five series. So this play-in round is best-of-five. Um, and the other four teams in the playoffs, they are guaranteed they get buys into the actual playoffs that will also statistically count towards the playoffs. So those teams, let's start there because this is the easy one. Boston, Tampa, Washington, and Philadelphia. They'll be playing for seeding. 
So that'll be, they'll be playing a little round robin tournament amongst themselves. While this, the rest of the eight teams are playing this play in series of those four teams, Boston, Tampa, Washington, and Philadelphia. Um, I mean, it, it seems like an easy question to me, but if you are one of these teams, which team do you, one of the playing teams, which of these do you want to match up against? Sorry, so your question is, if you're one of the teams with a bye, which of the playing teams do you want to match up against? Well, if you're, see, bad, bad question. Uh, <laughs> no, which, if you were one of the teams in the playing tournament, which of these bye teams? Oh, would you Philadelphia. Be most okay, right. Easy. Easy question. Less easy question. Of the other three, which one do you want to face the least? I would probably say a healthy Boston team. But the, the health is the key, right? Because Boston's got a few key players who are not playing right now. Tampa is, was the other team I was going to say, but again, they've got a few key players who are not playing right now. Like it really kind of depends on what these teams look like when playing time comes around. Right. Cause Tampa, we know because it came out before the uh, unfit to practice regulations came in. We know Tampa, Steven Stamkos is injured. Yes. Um, Boston had a number of players missing practice at various times this week. Um, so, and some significant parts of that team. Yeah. Big time. So I guess, you know, if these, if this stuff kind of stays consistent of the three Washington <laughs> seems to be the one that I haven't heard of anyone missing any, anyone significant missing any practice time. Yeah. Well, and much like, and I think we'll get to this and you'll kind of get this sense as we preview the series as well, but it's such a small sample of what they're going to be playing, how they get ready is it takes, you're going to have to come in red hot. And we've seen all year Boston was a top team. They were able to do it. Um, Washington, a little, you know, they they were a more roller coaster team this year. Yeah. And it to me, it comes down to which Braden Holtby are we going to get? Yeah. Because uh, he's he can be next level, otherworldly, and then he can be average. And so... Uh, that's a big piece of what they're going to need. Yeah, I mean, the guys always turned it in, turned it on during the playoffs, which is a positive for them, but he's never had a four-month break before the playoffs either. It's true, right? Unprecedented, uncharted territory for every player in this um, to come in ice cold. Yeah. Get, what, two exhibition games, one exhibition, one exhibition game, and then this round robin. So um, I think it'll be interesting to see what, what those four teams are able to do. So after the play in series, do they reseed? Yes. So they'll be, and they're reseeding the entire playoffs this year. That's one change that they're doing. So right. whoever wins this round robin tournament becomes the number one seed, the two, three, four, et cetera. And so the, the winner of the round robin will play the worst team coming out of the play in tournament. Gotcha. Which, I mean, is how it should be. I think a reseeding gives you that fairness. Yeah, now, I Brent, agree. <clears throat> I mean, it's also more fair if it's based on an entire season instead of a three-game sample size. But, hey. We are where we are. <laughs> this is where we're at. So, <laughs> let's head down. Like, like I said, best of five in the east best of five in the west as well shockingly there's not this isn't baseball where there's different rules in each conference it's the well, same first of all before we get into it can i say that i i like the best of five series i like that format i think the stakes are higher the pressure is higher you have you you have way less margin for error it'll well, be more I, exciting for sure i think if you look at like i like to look at it as uh there's that saying that a series is never over till you lose at home. Yep. And that applies really well to a best of seven series, but in a best of five in theory, it would be what, like a two, two, one perhaps. Yeah. 
And so if you lose the first two games at home or you lose the first one on the road, you now need to win out. So you cannot, right? You cannot get behind. If you're down, you lose the first two games, coming back is going to be almost impossible. So I'm with you, right? You're going to have to come out red hot and, and get that. And you're coming in with almost no, right? One playoff, one preseason game or exhibition game, I guess we can call it. Yeah. But then you're coming in. And you've got this whole new environment where you have to play playoff hockey in an empty arena. Yeah. Potentially, have you seen these clips that the that teams are trying to get fans to send in audio clips no. of them doing specific cheers? No, they're not. Yeah, I saw uh, specifically the New York Rangers posted them and said, all right, here's the list of cheers we want you to do. Send them in and a Apparently, they're just going to aggregate them and make it sound like they have thousands of fans in this stadium. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when, uh, you know, who decides that? Who decides what cheers are allowed at what point in time when it's technically a neutral site? Yeah, right? It's Oh, it's going to be so weird. It's kind of a neat fan engagement idea, but in, I don't know how it's going to work in practice. Yeah, I mean... I was talking with some someone uh, who works in not not in sports marketing, but in marketing this week, and they were like the the opportunities for engagement and also advertising is huge, and I I don't think the league is at the point where they even know what they could or will do in some of these areas. I mean, I I just think the league's like focused on how they're going to do this. <laughs> Right. Yes. They're trying to not have all the players get sick right now. That's kind yeah. of, yeah. It's priority number uno. And, and writing out that map from one hotel to the arena. <laughs> yeah. They're going to need that one. Um, so that's what, that's where we're at um, for the format. So let's start Nick. First up the number five Pittsburgh Penguins take on the number 12 Montreal Canadiens. This seems like a, the biggest lopsided. It does. But does that also make it the biggest opportunity for uh, an upset? I don't see why not. I can't see the Montreal Canadiens winning this series. <laughs> I can't. Pittsburgh's too good for them. So in in what scenario does Mon- would Montreal be able to do this? Um, <clears throat> there's no Sidney Crosby, which as of right now there's not. But there's no really telling what his injury is or how long he'll be out for. Right. Uh, and I think that Pittsburgh's goalie situation has to crumble, which is. V- very possible. Yeah. Right. That's definitely something that I could see happening. Um, that that could that could happen because Matt Murray hasn't been uh, the Matt Murray we've know, come to know and love, and uh, you know, behind him, they've gotten good support from Tristan Jari, but um, I'm not sure he's ready right now either. Yeah, their goalie situation is definitely the scariest part for that team. But I think, I think, um, I'm trying to remember their GM's name, Jim Rutherford. I think he's done a pretty valiant job of putting a decent, solid team on the ice in front of the goalie to give them the best chance uh, at outscoring their opponent. Mm -hmm. So this year, these two teams have already played three times. Uh, Montreal has won one of them. Pittsburgh has won two of them. One of those games were in overtime. So that being so, you know, even in that, we can look at it and say, all right, Pittsburgh's up 2-1. Is Montreal going to be able to win two in a row? Um, probably not. But again, in a, in a five-game series, anything is possible. And last year we sat here and thought Tampa was a Stanley Cup contender and they got swept by the Jackets. So That's right. 
You never know. My money's on Pittsburgh, though. My money is also on Pittsburgh. Um, what would you say? Let's do uh, let's do like a a ranking here, Nick. Okay. Of of these teams' odds of winning the Stanley Cup, and I. What I want to do is because, in theory, the loser of this does have a chance of winning the first overall pick. Mm-hmm. I, I knew that that would have to come up at some point. Right? So Montreal could lose this and then suddenly go and get Alexis Lafreniere. Yep. Which seems fair, right? No. Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So let, let's rank their odds of winning the Stanley Cup on the basis of first overall picks. Let's do it on uh, recent Oilers. Let's do it that way. So let's do it on a ranking of from Connor McDavid to Nail Yakupov. Where would you rank these teams' chances of winning the Stanley Cup? For me, if I'm looking at Pittsburgh, I would probably put them at a... I mean, it's pretty high. I would put them with at like a, a Rasmus Dahlin. Good, a lot of potential, but needs, needs to still show some of it. Yeah, needs some work, right, around the edges? Yeah. Yeah. I thought we were just sticking with Oilers draft picks, though. We could. Then I would. Then they would be a Ryan Nugent Hopkins. There you go. That's, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay. Before Nick, I hate to have to do this. Before uh, before we move on, can we just take a quick pause here? I've got a phone call. Yes. Do you mind if I just quickly take this? Go for it. Go for it. Sorry, Nick. I uh, I told him to call back later. It seemed it seemed like an important phone call, and uh, I think I don't know exactly. It looked like a Buffalo area code. Oh, they're working late tonight. What? You, I mean, they called you and you hung up on them. I told him to call back. I just said we're doing a podcast. I said, well, I didn't like say we, I said, I'm like, I'm in the middle of recording a podcast. Can you call me back later? Um, and so they're going to call back in like an hour. My heart's racing. All right. From now on, I'm just saying nobody deserves to win, but the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> this is, so uh, can we, can we use Rasmus Dalene as an example? Yes. Now we can put him in the, in the first Absolutely. overall pick pool. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I mean, and you only would have great things to say about him as if, as me picking him then. Of course. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get let's get to this next series, Nick. Next up, we have the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers. And one of the biggest question marks that I see coming into this series is who is going to be the goaltender for the Rangers? I, it's a tough one, man. They're in a tough spot with these goalies. They're in a tough spot. Uh, I think. I think without a question, Lundqvist is going to be on the bench, right? He'll he'll dress. He may not be the starter, but he'll be there dressed. Because for those who do not recall, uh, they have Alexander Gorgiev, which there was talk that he might get traded at the deadline. He did yeah. not get traded. He's still there. Igor Shester, Shesterkin uh, is there as well. Playing the least amount of games for the Rangers, but arguably has been the best goaltender for them this year. Yeah, and I think um, their coach, his name is uh, – I'm, I'm losing his name right now. David, David Quinn. David Quinn. Um, I saw today in a headline that he had said it's basically Shesterkin's net to lose – he was the hottest goalie when the season uh, ended uh, and he's going to be given the same opportunity now as he would have then. That is an interesting approach to say, we're just going to go with the hot hand from four months ago. 
I mean, what else do you do? It's it's weird, right? They're basically starting from scratch. Essentially. Like, it, yeah. this has been a full off season. Yeah. And so who knows what uh, what's going to happen. And it, it's even hard because in these game scenarios, there's so little that you'll be able to tell from even, like, their split squad games that they're having at practice. Oh, yeah. Um, on the Carolina side a team that has been having, you know, a strong year, obviously coming in, they are the, what did I say? The six, six seed. Uh, we're likely going to be making the playoffs anyways, continually improving. Um, what, in what way does Carolina have to, what does Carolina have to do to be able to beat the Rangers? Well, they could bring David Ayers back. Just that worked. <laughs> it worked that one time. No, um, I think they just need to shut. They need to shut down the Rangers' kind of top line, because to me, that's where the Rangers are. That's where all their offense is coming from. That is their biggest offensive threat. And uh, I think Carolina has the decor in place to to do just that: shut down the Rangers' offense, um, and they'll be fine. Yeah. Here is what's interesting, Nick. So looking at the season series, these teams being in the same division have already played four times this year. Mm-hmm. The New York Rangers are 4-0 and oh against the oh, Carolina Hurricanes. That is interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. No, and pretty soundly, right? They won 4-2, 3-2, 5-3, and last played February 21st, they won 5-2. to Wow. So not, not an easy path for the Hurricanes forward because the Rangers obviously have been able to get past them. Looking at that 5-2 game on February 21st, the Rangers, um, like you said, right, shut down that top line. They had a goal for Mika Zabinijad, Artemi Panarin, um, and then some of that secondary scoring, right? Jesper Faust from Artemi Panarin. So when you can shut down those guys, which obviously Caroline has not been able to do this year, um, you're going to have some success, but um, you're going need to need to start there. Yeah. And then the Hurricanes, obviously, analytics darlings, they have been for years, which doesn't always – pay off but they take lots of shots maybe not always from the best place on the ice but they take lots of shots and they get a lot of shot attempts off so uh the new york goalies are going to be busy whoever it is they decide to go with which i honestly in in thinking of that i think that's the best case i would want to play a a hurricanes team because when you're coming in cold essentially being able to get some pucks on you from, like you said, not necessarily the best locations, right? Lots of shots from the point from this Carolina team and being able to get those and get warmed up, get into the game feel is going to be great for Shesterkin to be able to do that. So who do you got? I mean, coming into this, I would have put it pretty close, um, but I would put the chances of the, Carolina Hurricanes advancing at, and if I'm only allowed to use Oilers' first overall picks, I would go with, I mean, I guess there's only, what, four four of them to choose from. Four, yeah. I would probably put them at, I mean, I might have to go nail Yakupov at this point in time for the Hurricanes. Really? I think so. See, I'd put them higher up. I'd put them maybe – you know you know what I was actually going to say until you said Yakupov that made me bump it down? I was going to say Taylor Hall. I like the Hurricanes' odds in this series better than the Rangers. I think the Rangers were able to figure out their system, right? Of these big changes bringing in Panarin this year. Uh, the switch away from Lungfist finally started to transpire more and seeing what this future holds for this team. Also, Jacob Truba, the big addition in the offseason. Like, this is a different Rangers team, and it took a, a while for that to really build. And now we're here, and 
They've beaten – the Hurricanes haven't been able to beat the Rangers once this year. They need to do it three times. They do. I, and I, he wouldn't be a huge impact player for the Rangers, but Capo Caco is not playing right now, correct? Uh, I do. I'm not 100% sure on that. That's a good point. Uh, less important, Brendan Lemieux still suspended for two games as well. They came out today and yeah. officially said that. <laughs> that was uh, hilarious. You think he was just like sitting those last four months thinking maybe they'll forget. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was literally, that was the last hockey game I watched was the game that he got suspended for, and I forgot. Oh, my God. Um, it's hilarious. According to, according to a quick Google search, Capo Caco is on the ice in his plane. So. He is, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, that I mean, good to have the second overall pick from last year on your team. So The Rangers are definitely better than I thought they would be this year. But I'm still going Carolina over New York. You're going Carolina. I'm going New York over Carolina. Um, it's glad, glad we could disagree on that one, Nick. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's right. really nice. <laughs> uh, next up, the New York Islanders versus the Florida Panthers. This is this. The Islanders are the seven. The Panthers are the 10. What a series this is going to be. Should I go get a quarter so we can flip it? <laughs> I mean, it, it would probably be as exciting as watching the Islanders and Panthers <laughs> play. I was thinking the other day, I was sitting on the couch thinking about watching live hockey again, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to watch it all day. I'm going to have to skip games. These are definitely going to be the games that I'm skipping. See, and this is what uh, I, I literally said this week. I was like, you know, it's a really good thing that I've got a lot of time off this summer because hockey starts at 10 a.m. and it goes till 10 p.m. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock that in. Also, unfortunately, I have a family vacation the first week of playoffs. So I'll be, uh, I'll be watching it from the side of the pool. It's not the worst way to watch hockey. No. Islanders were a team. Barry Trotz has got, gotten a lot out of this roster. Since he came over. Yeah. The Florida Panthers, with their big off-season acquisitions, have done a, not a lot with their team. No. Kind of scary, actually, how poorly the Panthers performed this year. Right. With the addition of Bobrovsky, with Joel Quenville there, I thought the power of the mustache would be able to lead them more. Apparently not. We uh, that's what we got happening there. Do you do you think that with Florida, right? Like they were not great at the start of the year. They started to turn it around a little bit. Um, where are you at with this one? Because to me, like you said, should you get a coin? I'm I'm along the same lines. That's that, that is how I feel. Do you have the head to head schedule up from this season? If you share your thoughts on this series, I'll have them by the time you're done. So I think that I would probably lean more towards New York than Florida just based on their performance over the course of the season because I can't see the Florida Panthers taking four months off and then suddenly figuring it out and coming back and whereas the Islanders can pick up where they left off. So that's where I'm at. I would go New York over Florida in this series. Okay, that, that that seems very reasonable to me. Uh, so far this year, these teams have played um, a fair amount. So uh, the Islanders have won similarly to the last series. New York teams are gangbusters in the playoffs. Uh, they are 3-0 and against the Panthers this year um, with one of those wins coming via the shootout. So two of them in regulation, one in the shootout. But close games, like these were both close, low-scoring games. They won 3-2, 2-1, and 3-1. And so I think that's a lot of what we're going to see. Um, Very close series. Uh, I think one one thing that I think back to, I know Panthers fans are still um, a little, well, you know, both teams in this series, right? They met in the playoffs a few years ago. I don't know if you remember, Nick, there was the uncalled, 
there was the, the tripping penalties were a real struggle in this series. And this makes me, I mean, we've seen what Islanders fans can do when John Tavares comes back into town. This is one that I'm at, I am sad that we won't have fans in the building specifically for this series because there is no love, oddly enough, no love lost between the two fan bases. I think most of the players are probably moved on, but the fan bases have not. That's great. I love that. I love sports. But I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this Islanders roster right now. <laughs> I'm kind of talking myself out of picking them. Like, how is this team, how is this team as good as they are? Well, Nick, we've got uh, I mean, they've got decent enough goaltending, right? Yeah. From both but, of their goalies. From both of them, which we saw the exact same thing last year, right? Like Robin Lehner did a great job. Uh, Thomas Grace was fine enough behind him, though. Um, same thing this year with Varlamov and Grice. Offensively, there's Matthew Barzell. And, yeah. and probably, I mean, Andrew Ladd's probably going to do a thing too, oh, right? Oh, boy. Okay, let's move on. I'm sorry I asked. You still got the notifications on? Still got the notifications on. Uh, Andrew Ladd has scored a goal this year. So first off, how dare you? Um, <laughs> if he had, a, you know what? If COVID hadn't shut it down, he had one goal in four games. That's a 20 goal pace for the entire season. And I don't see why he can't return to that form now. He's also a plus two. So they should probably put him on the top line. I mean, look, he's generating stuff in, in those four games. He also has 23 hits. He's throwing the body around. He's scoring goals. Five to a player, Mr. Andrew Ladd. We'll see what he can do in a best of five series. If if he gets on the ice, which I <laughs> I don't I, I think Barry Trotz is pretty pretty firm in his no Andrew Ladd take. Yeah, I would think so too. Um I would I would take the Islanders to win the series though. The way that they are able to play and the way that they're able to uh, really work and shut down a team. And we'll get to, you know, I have a similar thought in our next series, but Barry Trotz has shown that he can, you know, coach well. He did that with the Capitals. Um, he has taken this team and managed to get them this far. And I am a full-on believer that Barry Trotz can can lead this team to to the playoffs through the Panthers. I'm with you on that, Carl. Brings us to, Nick, our final series. It is the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs are the eight seed. The Jackets are the nine seed. Oh, boy. So this one to me, this one, like when I think about this series, I'm like on paper, the Leafs are, they're just a far better team. Like on paper, they should run away with this series. But there's this voice in the back of my head that's like, don't write off the Blue Jackets. They're going to give these guys a run for their money. Absolutely they are. I mean, they're only, what, in in total you know, points for the season, they were close enough that, uh, what, point zero? No, they were tied in points. Literally, literally tied. So, um, I mean, could, could go either way. It could go either way. This is not the same Blue Jackets team that shocked the hockey world last year by sweeping the Tampa Bay Lightning, but their spirit is just as strong. Well, and and in the the same way, this is what I alluded to with the the Trotz comment. John Tortorella managed to take that team and build a game plan that was team specific and took out the juggernaut Tampa Bay Lightning that had just set the record for most points. He can do that to this Leafs team. He Absolutely doesn't, he can. Does not need that same talent, right? He can do this without Panarin, without Bobrovsky, without Matt Duchesne, without all those other pieces he had. He can do that again. He absolutely can. And I think that this Leafs squad is susceptible kind of mentally and emotionally um, and they will start responding to uh, any kind of negative feelings that they start to get. 
And Tortorella, not opposed to mind games or using the media to his benefit. He will rile them up. Here's my big question for John Tortorella, though. What do you do in net? I mean, I think you've got to go with Elvis, do you not? I think so. I mean, I think both goalies were – I I think Corpusalo was pretty good uh, in the season as well. Obviously not as hot as as Elvis ended up being. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're in a good – yeah, he had a 9-11 save percentage. That's pretty decent. Uh, They're in a good spot in net uh, with both of these goalies, and I think it's – it gives them even more confidence knowing whoever's in net they're they have a chance at, at winning. Yeah. And the, this Leafs team, even Sheldon Keefe this week said, he's like, yeah, we've got some problems on defense. You think like you spent all of your money on offense. Freddie Anderson is a quite a good goaltender, but is not enough to make up for some of those holes. No, he's a, you're right. He's quite a good goaltender. He's not a great goaltender. This team has always relied on just scoring more than their opponents. They've do, never been great at keeping pucks out of the net. Do you think they need to just completely lean into that and try yes. to win these, like win these games eight to six? Yes. I think that's what they've been trying to do for the last two years. With varied results. With varied results. Yeah. I know the players want to, right? If you were to ask Mitch Marner how he wants to play, he would very much probably say, I just want to score the most goals. (laughs) I just want to go score all the goals. That's right. Yeah. Uh, These two teams have faced off twice this year. Not certain it's relevant because both of the games were in the first nine games of the regular season. That said, Mm -hmm. in the season opener, uh, for Columbus, they faced the Maple Leafs and lost 4-1. They then bounced back and won 4-3 in overtime. So season series split, but that was in October. Not sure it's super relevant now. This one's going to go five games. And I think that you might disagree because you picked the Rangers over the uh, Hurricanes, but I think this series has the greatest option or the the greatest chance of the lower seed winning. I mean, but the they're essentially like in point percentage they're tied. So I would I would certainly think that uh, this could be the, an an upset in theory. Yeah. But I, I'm going Toronto on this one. Should I go get another quarter? Yeah, do it. Here's my question. If Toronto wins, is everybody going to claim that they've won a playoff series finally? No, this isn't playoffs, Nick. Oh, dear. does it? Does this count as winning? Because it counts as playoff stats. Does this count as winning a playoff series? Probably. I guess it does. I mean, if they're counting these stats as playoffs, all of a sudden you have to count it. Yeah, I guess so. This is so dumb. I don't know why they decided to make that decision. So dumb. I'm going Toronto too. I think that they'll probably win this series. I think so. I, I think that with with what they have, with Columbus trying to bring back, I mean, if Elvis is what he was able to do in the at his regular season, not even like peak, but his average in the regular season, if he can do that, he they win. It was such a small sample size. It was so yeah. long ago. I'm not 100% sure that I give full faith to it. Yeah. Goalies are are voodoo in normal times. So it's going to be impossible to predict how he comes out now. But, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd go Toronto. Yeah. And Columbus does have, uh, like, some known injuries as well um, coming out. Brand Dubinsky is still out um, as well. Looks like Josh Anderson... mm, is going to be back for them, um, but not... Yeah, he hasn't skated yet, has he? No, but there's there's talk that he... Again, lack of injury reports is a real thing that we've got yeah. now. Um, but he might be able to return, so... No, well, unless, we'll see. And the Leafs, who knows what they have for injuries. There's probably a lot of them, but... Um, 
everyone should be healthy for most of these teams. We don't know because anytime anyone gets something, they're listed as unfit to practice or unfit to play. Uh, Knowing now from the numbers, one one thing that I found interesting, I kept assuming that when like, you know, the Bruins held seven people out of practice that I was like, well, seven people just tested positive. But with those numbers, we just saw of two out of 800. Now I just think they're hurt. Yeah, I mean, they very well could be because they're not changing the language from one uh, situation to the to the other, right? Yeah, so we will not be able to know uh, what injuries are or are not. Um, and I mean, I think that's teams are going to use that to their advantage. The fact that they don't have to say anymore, yeah, he's out for the rest of the series. Because, uh, I mean, if, if you were to say, yeah, he's out for at least two weeks, seems a little suspicious as well we want to you know team, teams want to respect the players uh and their privacy so i think it's actually going to make for some make it a little more fair on Absolutely. the ice because you're not going to know that you know star defenseman has a sore ankle so you can take some hacks at it while yeah. in front of the net yeah it's good I'm, I'm all in favor of it i don't think there was any ever any reason to be as detailed in public reports as they are so yeah all right nick I'm carl that was fun we're talking about hockey we're talking about hockey uh we're remembering as we go through what's been happening hopefully this helped you get up to speed with what's happening in the easter conference next week we'll look at the west any other news that happens in the meantime leading up to that and then we've got games we're so close we're so close. And it all starts at the same time. I thought baseball was starting like at least a week early so we could ease into the sports thing, but it's just two days. Yeah, we've got, we're going to have some exhibition games. We're going to have uh, some of those coming up here. Baseball starts on Thursday. Basketball starting up soon. I got the schedule for all the Raptors games. Uh, they're, they're playing, it looks like they're playing more exhibition games. I think they have three or four before they get fired up, but um yeah. We're going to have, it's all coming back all at once. Clear your August calendars, folks, because sports is on. We're back. Before we wrap up the show, I want to remind everyone about the Alberta Podcast Network and the fine shows over there. Uh, As always, lots of great things happening. Um, I always want to point you to the events page, um, which is, changed a little bit because you may not know this nick in-person events aren't a thing i did know that actually yeah you may you may have realized that over the last (laughs) last little bit yeah still some great things there podcast brunch club still happening uh head on over there however um the rest of the network and the great things are going on over there a rebrand of the website the website just got a nice little touch up um and one thing I, I would be checking out is Esk's Empire, Nick. And one reason I'd be looking at that is because they most certainly will be covering the name change of the Edmonton Eskimos and all that that entails, potentially to the Edmonton Empire, which makes me think of this. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what their show becomes with the change of the team name but tune into that and you can find them at eskempire.ca or wherever you find podcasts so head on over there and tune into the eskimo empire podcast to find out from an inside perspective what's happening with some name changes in sports because uh i mean it's about time that we fix some of these and uh it's happening so tune in there you can find us at the fourth line podcast.com you can send us an email mail at the fourth line podcast if you like dislike have any thoughts you want to share you can send them to us via email you can dm us or tweet at us on the tweeters at fourth line podcast over there facebook.com slash the fourth line podcast and we'll be back next week and every week through the playoffs to bring you everything you need to know for hockey see ya time for us to wrap up another fourth line show i know what you're thinking you don't want us to go Carl, you better go and take that super important phone call. And don't forget to tell them how good I am at all the things, all the things.
All right, everyone. As we promised last week, if we got a phone call from the Buffalo Sabres, we would be back. We re- finished recording the show. And as promised, they did call back. And uh, I made sure to record it. Um, this is a, this is going to be the first that Nick even hears about it. So thanks for sticking around after the show is done. But uh, here here is what happened with uh, our phone call with the Buffalo Sabres. Hello? Hi, this is Wayne Pagula from the Buffalo Sabres. I'm the uh, human resources manager for the team here, uh, and I'm looking to speak to a Mr. Fourth Line podcast. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's me. Hi, Mr. Fourth Line. How are you doing this evening? Good. Yeah, I mean, we just finished finished actually finished doing the show, so it's uh, I mean, hockey's coming back, so it's I mean, I guess. Not not for everyone, but... Well, hockey's coming back for some, but thanks for that reminder. Uh, I hope your show went well. I just have a few questions for you. You were listed as a reference for a candidate that we're evaluating for a very, very high-profile role within our organization. Do you have a few minutes, Mr. Fourthline, to answer some questions? Yeah, I'd love to. The candidate's name we're considering is Nick Seguin. Do you you're familiar with this individual? Uh, Nick Nick Sagan. Nick Sagan. Okay. Yeah, I think we're talking about the same person. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Nick, love Nick. Nick's a great guy. Well, that is great to hear. Like I said, we're considering for him for a very high profile position. I was hoping you could help me out by telling me some of the candidates' strengths. I mean, so without knowing exactly the role, I know uh, I know Nick has a very good uh, sense of the hockey community, the hockey world. Uh, you know, he's you could listen to all the episodes of the show he's been on if you wanted to. You know, maybe. Smash that subscribe button. You know, is it Wayne? The name's Wayne. Okay, yeah, Wayne. If you wanted, you could go check out the show. But um, I think one of the my favorite things about Nick is he's always is prepared with for everything that he does. He's a consummate professional, and he does whatever it takes to get the job done. Well, that's just great to hear because this role and did I mention it's high profile? It needs a strong sense of preparedness. Now, I, I, I noticed you said you, you have your own show, and uh, I am going to check it out. It would, it would be nice if, you know, I have a blog. Uh, you know, if you want to call it out, that would be great. Uh, it's, it's, it's really about dry rubs for meat. Uh, and my different recipes. So, I, you know, if you want to check it out, it's waynesdryrubs.com. Okay. <laughs> Wayne, I, you know, we certainly in the off season, we like to talk about some barbecue. So I'll, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll check it out. And if there's, if there's ever a time that we need someone to talk about barbecue, uh, we'll, we'll send you a message. Hey, that's great. And just make sure when you go to the site to turn your ad blocker off, because I really get those revenues from those uh, from those ad views. So I'd really appreciate Can, that. Wait, Wayne, I'm, I'm a busy guy. I'd love to sit here and talk rubs with you. But uh, do you have any more questions about Nick? Oh, oh no, you you covered everything. Look, Mr. Fourth Line, you have been great. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, if we need anything further, I will give you a call. All right. Thank you very much. And um, happy, happy grilling, Wayne. Have a great night. Adios.